Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, I wanna show you how you can create multiple dependent dropdown lists in Microsoft Excel. So what does that even mean and why would you ever wanna use something like this? Well, let's say you have people entering data into Microsoft Excel. To make sure people don't make data entry errors, maybe you wanna include a dropdown list. That'll make it as easy as possible. And the option that someone selects in that first dropdown list will influence what options are available in a second or a subsequent dropdown list. If you wanna follow along with this video, I've included a sample file in the description down below. Otherwise, let's check this out. Here I am in Microsoft Excel and management at the Kevin Cookie Company, they do a good job of keeping employees busy, but they've requested that I pull together an order log. An order log is something that we fill out every time we get an order here. We enter in the salesperson who drove the order, and then we also enter the associated customer. Now, I wanna make sure that when we have our employees fill this out, that they enter it as accurately as possible. So I could have people just manually type it in, and here we'll enter in the salesperson, Kevin, but undoubtedly what happens all the time is people make mistakes. And here we see that Kevin was entered incorrectly. So instead, we can use just a simple dropdown list to make sure that people enter the salesperson name in correctly. To insert a basic dropdown list, let's go up to the top tabs and click on the one called data. Over here under the data tools category, there's an option called data validation. Click on that. This opens up a data validation prompt and right here we can set the validation criteria. And currently this cell is set to allow any value at all. And that's why I was able to enter Kevin with a C. So instead I'll click on this dropdown list and let's select list right here. I want this to be a dropdown list. I'll select that and next I have to indicate what is the source of this dropdown list. Now, if we look over here, here I have a list of all of our different salespeople at the Kevin Cookie Company. So for the source, I'll simply highlight these three cells and then I'll click on OK. Back on the sheet, I can now see that I've successfully added a dropdown list. Here I have a dropdown list icon. And when I click on this, I can see all of the names of our different sales associates. Now, if I try to enter a name of someone who's not on the sales team, let's say for example, Adele, here we'll get this nasty error message telling us that it doesn't meet the data validation criteria. And of course it doesn't. Adele no longer works here. She tried to sell our secret recipe. Here I'll click on cancel and I'll go back to the dropdown list and let me select Kevin. Now that we've created a simple dropdown list, next I want to show you how we can create a dependent dropdown list. So here if we look over, we have all of our different salespeople. And then each salesperson at the Kevin Cookie Company has the customers that they're in charge of. So here you can see I have the heaviest workload. I've got a lot of customers. Then Oliver has some customers and Ava has some customers. So I wanna set it up so when I select a salesperson over here, I get another dropdown list in the customer cell that's dependent on the salesperson. So how do we do this? Well, let's move over to column H and we're gonna build our list right here under the header filtered list. And first off, I wanna get all the customers back who are associated with this salesperson selected here. And we're gonna use a function called xlookup. With xlookup, you can pass in a name of a salesperson who you're looking for and it'll send back all of the associated customers. It kind of works like magic. To use xlookup, let's go up to the top left-hand corner and let's click on the insert function icon. This is by far the easiest way to enter a function. This opens up a prompt where we can now insert a function and right up here, let's search for the function called xlookup. Type that in and then click on go and let's select the function right down here, then click on okay. We can now pass in arguments to the xlookup function. Now over here, we see that some of them are in bold and some of the arguments are not in bold. The ones in bold are required and those are going to be the only three that we use. And first, we need to enter in a lookup value. Now, once again, I wanna get all of the customers associated with this salesperson. So I wanna look up the customers for Kevin. So for the lookup value, I'll select Kevin right here. Next, I need to define what is the lookup array. So what does that mean? Well, I wanna look up Kevin and I wanna look it up against all of our different salespeople. 
So right here, I see that Kevin, Oliver, and Ava are our three salespeople. So that's gonna be my lookup array. Now, once it finds a match, so here it'll look for Kevin, it'll find Kevin right here. And now I need to indicate, well, what should it return? So once it finds Kevin, I want it to return all of these different customers. So for the return array, I'll simply highlight all of the different customers down here. I'll even include a few additional rows at the bottom, just in case we add some additional customers in the future. Now, once again, these additional arguments are all optional and I don't have a need for them, so I'll simply leave them blank. We're all set now on entering our function, so let's click on OK. And check that out. I now have all of the different customers associated with Kevin listed out right here. When I click into the very top cell here, right up in the top left hand corner, once again, I can review the function that I entered. If I click into the second row, here I see the exact same formula, but this time it's ghosted or it's grayed out. The actual formula itself sits here in this very top cell and the results that it returns spill over into all of these other cells. So if I wanna go back and modify the formula again, I have to go into this very top cell. Now that I have this list with all of these customers, how do we turn this into a dropdown list? Well, it's just as easy as the dropdown list that we created before. Over here, I'll click in the cell under customer. Let's go back up to the top tabs, click on data, and then let's click into data validation. And right here, let's set it to a list type. Right here, I need to define the source of this list. And here, I'll click in the very first cell of this array. And because this is an array that I'm passing back, there's one special thing that we need to do. I need to add the hash symbol or the pound symbol, and this will tell Excel that we don't just wanna return this one specific cell, but we also wanna return the entire spill right here. Once you enter that in, let's click on OK. And that successfully added a dropdown list for customer. Here I'll click into customer, let's click on the dropdown list, and I can see all of the different customers that are associated with Kevin. Over here, I can select a different salesperson. Let me pick Oliver. And here I'll click and we can see all of his customers right here. Now, of course, we have all of these zeros at the bottom. And what are those? When we set up our X lookup earlier for the return array, we selected this entire area. So that's why we're getting the zeros back. With Kevin, I have four zeros down here. And with Oliver, I have even more. So how do we get rid of these zeros? We're gonna add an additional portion to this function to get rid of all of those. With this cell selected, let's go back up to the top here and in front of XLOOKUP, type in the function unique. Then we're going to open the parentheses and close the parentheses. To customize the unique function, let's put our mouse over the unique portion of the formula and then let's click into the function helper. This opens up the function helper and here I can see the array that I pass in. And this is the XLOOKUP that we entered earlier. The X lookup returns all of these different customer names, and that's exactly what I want, so I'll leave this as is. We could skip over by column, and right at the bottom it says exactly once. We only wanna include values that appear one time. The zero appears more than once, so here if we type in true, that'll remove all of the zeros. Next, let's click on OK. And here now I can see an updated list for Oliver. And when I click over into customer, here I'll open up the drop down list again, and now we no longer see any of those zeros. Now, one of the really neat things is here I'll take dollar captain from Kevin, and maybe we're just balancing out the portfolio of customers. I'll move this customer over to Oliver. Here again, I'll click on the drop down list, and here you see that it's been automatically updated with dollar captain. I can now jump over to a different salesperson. Let's take Kevin as an example. I'll move back over to Kevin. And here when I click on my dropdown list, here you'll see that this list exactly matches my list of customers. Of course, one of the downsides right now is this list in the dropdown matches this list exactly. And it's not in ascending or descending order. So it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to find the values that I'm looking for. Now I could come over here and I could sort all of these lists, but let's say I'm moving items around and I don't wanna to have to go back and sort. Instead, I could add sort to the function that we used earlier. Here, when I click into this cell again, I can see the function that we added up above. Within this function, here I'll add one more function and I'll type in sort. 
Here I'll open the parentheses and then I'll close the parentheses at the end. Once again, I could click onto sort and I could click into the function helper. This opens up the function helper and here I can see the array that I'm passing in. And once again, the array is just this list that we saw earlier. Over here, I could decide how do I wanna sort it? Do I wanna sort it in ascending order, or descending order? I just want it in alphabetical order, so I'm not gonna make any other changes, but I just wanted to show this so you know that you can also customize the arguments of this function. Once you're all done, let's click on OK. Now that I've added sort, I can come over here and let's once again open up the dropdown list. And now you see that my dropdown list is in alphabetical order. So the order doesn't match what appears here, but this will make it a little bit easier for our employees to find. All right, well, let me know down below in the comments, was this easier than you expected it to be? To see more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.